small car and a small computer. Yes, this is a real computer, not just one of those little information managers. Built-in word processor, Lotus-type spreadsheet, full keyboard, function keys, cursor keys, number pad, serial port, parallel port, and if you need more applications or storage, a memory card. Yes, portable computers are changing from the mini PC compatibles like this Atari portfolio to the full function screamers that can take the place of a desktop. Today we take a look at the new generation of portable computers on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association. Additional funding is provided by Byte Magazine and BIX, the Byte Information Exchange, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, I know you like gadgets, and I've got a great one for okay. you. This is the new grid pad computer from Grid Systems. And look, my new keyboard. Let me show you how it works. Suppose I'm a real estate agent. I'm showing you a house. You say, uh, what's it going to cost me? I say, OK, Gary, you'll want to borrow $36,000. And I just write it in with the pen. You say, let's say you want to borrow this for 24 months. Uh, the interest rate I put in here, say 12%. I simply touch payment with the pen. It calculates the answer. Mr. Kildall, that's going to cost you. Uh, $16.95 a month. Now, critics have said most computers are really nothing but the fancy keyboards or typewriters. <laughs> this is clearly not just that. What do you think about this input device? Is there a market for it? I think there's absolutely a market for it. I think it's really exciting about it is that we're getting very, very close to that concept of the Dynabook that came mm -hmm. out of Xerox yeah. Park in 1972. You know, eight and a half by 11, three hole punch, right. quarter inch thick computer. Of course, in those days, it was made out of cardboard. <laughs> 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 but uh, the fundamental problem with, with keyboard in a situation like this, you're out there in the field holding this thing. Uh -huh. How are you going to touch type with right. that one hand? And also, if you're trying to be uh, have a very compact computer, you're limited by the size of people's fingers. It's a fundamental right. law of nature. You're not going to get the keyboard right. very, very small. But the important thing is you can take this thing home, put a keyboard accessory uh -huh. on it, and all of a sudden, you've got a desktop right. computer. Gary, we'll see a whole new generation of portable computers, from the new Macintosh portable to the world's first laptop with a color LCD screen and the new mini pocket computer that fits right in your pocket. Now, laptops have become such an important part of the computer business, they have their own convention now. Laptop 89, held just a few weeks ago in New York. Here's a report. There were several main themes here at Laptop 89, and one of them was certainly the continuing drive to pack more power into a smaller package. You can't hardly find a person here who wouldn't like to have a lighter laptop computer with all the functionality that is available in some of the heavier form factors. Zenith was showing off its new mini sport with two inch floppy disks. If you really want to go small, there were the credit card size storage devices being demonstrated by Comco. If you want bulk and don't care about size, Future Communications was showing off its portable CD-ROM drive. Another main theme was communications. Touch-based systems demonstrated their new pocket modem with a fax card built in. And Vital Communications was selling a nest for a laptop that adds not only a modem and a fax card, but also a cellular phone, complete with built-in antenna. Using your new portable as a desktop PC is one excuse for buying a high-end computer. Compaq was showing off its desktop cradle for the 386 LT. You can also use the cradle to charge the removable batteries. Three hours of charging gets you three hours of use. Compaq is particularly proud of its battery technology. What we have seen with like the Compaq SLT-286 is that we can run a VGA display along with a 40 megabyte hard disk and a 286 processor and still have over three hours of battery capacity. Epson was also pitching its Equity LT as a desktop substitute, showing the removable LCD screen, which lets you hook up the Equity to a desktop color monitor. As usual, screen readability was a major topic at Laptop 89, and one of the best solutions around was this add-on from SkiSoft, which solves the problem by letting you increase the size of the characters until they are readable, regardless of the lighting conditions. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
Joining us in the studio now is Sparky Sparks, Vice President with Dynabook Technologies, next to Sparky John Fairbanks, Vice President for Engineering at Pocket Computer. Sparky, uh, one of the questions I've had in the past, I know some mm -hmm. other friends might have, is that uh, the name Dynabook is usually associated with the Xerox PARC effort, you know, in, in terms of their vision of the future of a small, very small computer. Uh, how is the name Dynabook here related to that? Well, we actually uh, borrowed the name, or I guess you will, from, uh, from Alan Kay, because uh, even though it is a uh, desktop computer mm -hmm. that's portable, we uh, have the same vision of what it can become and will become in the yep. future. I see, okay, well, we'll be able to look at the machine in a little more detail and talk about that vision. And one of the things that uh, John has now is a, is a computer called the Pocket. And uh, where is it, anyway? <laughs> in my pocket. <laughs> oh, okay. This is uh, an engineering prototype of the Pocket PC. Mm -hmm. It fits conveniently in your uh, suit coat pocket or in a lady's purse. And uh, it weighs about a pound. We've got uh, ROM cards in the bottom or RAM cards to store information on. Uh, inside, we've got a full 77-key typewriter-styled keyboard. Can you turn that around a bit so we can see that? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also got a uh, full CGA-compatible 80 by 25 display. It runs uh, MS-DOS. Uh, it's uh, some of the key features. It executes software uh, directly out of ROM, which makes, uh, uh, which makes it a lot faster and also uh, means you don't have to store your application so program. So there's a 1, 2, 3 spreadsheet just came up there. Uh, yeah, it, uh, there's no such thing as a boot up on a pocket. It's uh, alive all the time. Uh, anyway, it's uh, the key features of the machine, the, uh, the execution of software out of ROM, uh, the battery life, uh, obviously. It, uh, it's running on double A's, right? Runs on double A batteries. You get up to 100 hours uh, of operation mm -hmm. off, off one set of double A batteries. Now, you have a, a board here that looks like it may be related somehow to the pocket computer. <laughs> what do you got there? Yes, this definitely is the pocket computer board. Okay. This is the entire computer. Actually, the computer is uh, those little black blobs in the middle, and uh, down here you have some memory, and out here you have the power supply and connectors and miscellaneous things like that, keyboard on the other side, and uh, we put it all on one board to make it small okay. so that it would fit in your pocket. We've, uh, we've applied for 15 patents. Uh, we've got over 50 independent claims, and that's how we got the, uh, the size and the battery life and the performance in such a Now, what, what, what level of compatibility with IBM PCs you're talking about here? Uh, it's, it runs all the, uh, all the same software packages. So is it uh, AT, XT compatible at level? It is. Well, it's, it's an XT equivalent. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's obviously no drive in there, John, but what do you have over here? Well, this is, uh, this is an accessory that we sell along with the machine. Uh, it's... Uh, Runs three and a half inch floppy disks. Uh, it's got about the same footprint as a pocket PC. Weighs two pounds. Also runs on uh, throwaway AA batteries, and uh, it should last uh, on the batteries about as long as a computer. But does. I take it you could do file transfers out of there to a desktop and not have to use that. Oh, absolutely. Yes, we have Pocket Link, which uh, transfers information to desktop computers. And uh, what's what's the retail price of the, of the machine? Uh, suggested retail is under two thousand dollars, only at authorized pocket dealers. Tell me about the screen and the keyboard. Okay. Is that uh, any compromises there? Uh, I don't think so. The screen is uh, it's a full uh, 80 by 25 CGA compatible screen. Uh, the keyboard uh, is a typewriter styled keyboard. Uh, you can run all the uh, you know all the most popular software programs. Uh, now, can you get software on the memory cards for this? Yes, yes. We have uh, 14 different titles on the memory cards from people like Microsoft, Lotus, and WordPerfect. Uh, we've also got built-in applications. Well, John, that's a really neat little machine. Now, let's get back to the Dynabook. And, Sparky, what, what's really special about uh, the Dynabook? It differentiates it from, say, some of the other laptops. Well, the very special thing about it is that it is a full-function, full-capability desktop personal computer that also is a portable. It's the portable desktop or the desktop that's, uh, that's portable. The other thing is we've solved two problems. One is the data set consistency problem. This contains a 40-megabyte uh, disk file as well as a 1.4 megabyte floppy. It can go up to 4 megabytes of, uh, of memory. Uh, <clears throat> the configuration that you see here is the mobile configuration or the portable configuration with an 11-inch uh, VGA display, uh, 32 that shades. That screen's removable, isn't it? Uh, this yes, it's 32 shades of gray. And uh, I'll show you uh, the desktop configuration okay. and how I use this, which is my personal uh, system. And if you don't mind, I'll just reach back and turn it off. And, uh, uh, no, I'm going to take it off the battery first and uh, show okay, you the... So that's uh, the battery pack on this. This is the battery pack. It's a dry uh, lead-acid battery, mm -hmm. about four hours of, uh, of operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the modular construction 
so that we can do have a removable battery and a removable screen. And the screen removes by taking these two off, releasing the, and then just uh, pulling it out. And uh, this allows us to take advantage of uh, display technology mm -hmm. uh, so that we can add additional and another models of displays as well as take advantage of uh, a battery technology. Well, you also uh, have some kind of a docking uh, mechanism as well, don't uh, you? Yes, and that was the mechanical reconfiguration because okay. uh, you can see here we've got all the uh, ports, nine ports mm -hmm. uh, as a desktop, uh, desktop would have. And the docking module that you would have hooked up in your office uh, simply connects here uh, with these two little pins uh, on the side so that you don't have to go through so that. So these would have, would have all the cables in them. These would have, have all the cables, and that just stays mm -hmm. on the desk. And uh, what you're left with is a 1.7-inch uh, uh, thick, 6.6-pound, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 16 megahertz, 8286, uh -huh. uh, with a full capability of a and, desktop computer. Uh, and what about list price on computer. this uh, This configuration, 4795, and uh, you add the display screen, it's uh, 5795 and you add the battery and it's slightly over $6,000. Sparky John, thank you very thank much. You. One thing you haven't seen yet on a portable computer is a color LCD screen. Well, NEC has just come out with one. Here's a report. Since the first 30-pound luggables, portable computers have always lagged behind their desktop cousins, offering much less hardware for a much higher price. Only recently has that begun to change with the arrival of lighter machines complete with hard disks, faster processors, and finally, color screens. NEC Home Electronics recently announced the first color laptop for sale in the United States, the ProSpeed CSX. While LCD color technology has been available for several years, there were many obstacles to overcome before making the technology commercially practical. The color screens require many more pixels for a given viewing area. You have to have a, a point or picture dot for a blue and one for red and one for green and so, so you have at least three times as many picture points for a given res actual resolution. In addition to that, the other challenge is uh, in putting color screens together, you have to use uh, red, blue and green filters. The filters, of course, reduce the overall light throughput from the backlighting. So that's a challenge that we have to overcome and we did that by putting four uh, backlight tubes which we are using cold cathode fluorescent tubes uh, behind the screen. To the traveler who never leaves home without a computer, the LCD color screen now makes it possible to duplicate the features of an office machine on the road. But there's a price to pay. The ProSpeed CSX retails at about $8,500. The machine requires AC power and it weighs over 18 pounds. But if you're ready to make the leap to live in color, it's the only way to go. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. With us in the studio now is Jeffrey Fredericks, product manager with Toshiba, next to Jeffrey Bob Lawton, product manager with IBM. Gary? Stuart, it seems like we're moving up scale here at That's least. That's uh, sure. not, Nothing else in weight, at least. <laughs> we started off with a, with a little pocket computer and then went to, of course, a battery-powered right. laptop. And now we're talking about portables, right? And right. Uh, these are need to be connected to AC power to, to operate. Um, Jeff, uh, the 3200SX, uh, can you tell us the difference between that and the 5200? I think most people are, have seen the 5200. But oh, sure, the T3200SX uh, utilizes a 16 MHz 8386 SX microprocessor. Uh, that allows us access to the 32-bit software application platforms, but without the cost, a cost more comparable with a 286 machine. Uh, the T5200 uses a 20 MHz 8386 microprocessor, uh, has the 82385 RAM cache, so it's a considerably quicker machine. Uh, there are some other little differences. Uh, the 5200 has a detachable screen, whereas the T3200SX has uh, more ports on it and a little bit more internal expandability than the 5200. Now, you, you, of course, offer uh, a com uh, laptops and uh, battery-powered uh, machines. How do you differentiate those two markets with, with a, port a portable and a laptop, say? Well, we believe there are really two segments within that marketplace. There is a, a true battery-powered portable segment, and there is more of a desktop replacement portable segment as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the T3200SX, like the 5200, is targeted in at the actual desktop replacement, uh, a system that people can use on their desk. 
uh, people who are not really going to need battery power, but they will need to be able to relocate, uh, take it with them down the hall or to their home or wherever their new location may be. Jeffrey, you said this is more of an, uh, an entry level compared to the 5200. What's the difference in price between those two machines? The T3200SX has a retail price of $6299. Uh, that's for the 40 megabyte version. Uh, the T5200 40 megabyte version has a suggested retail of $7699. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bob, uh, you have a new machine here, my VM. What, uh, tell us a little bit about it. This is a full function, no compromise, portable desktop machine and it's based on our Model 70. It's a 386, 20 megahertz system, and it's got expansion slots. It comes standard with four megabytes of main storage, and it has uh, disk drive options of uh, 60 or 120 megabytes. And it's an extremely it powerful mm -hmm. machine. In the back are the uh, standard PS2 features, the serial, the parallel, the mouse, and the color monitor VGA attach. In addition to that, there's a, sl there's a connector back here to attach a five and a quarter mm -hmm. inch uh, device without using a slot and there are two expansion slots. The upper slot is a full 32-bit slot. It's a microchannel machine and the lower slot is a 16-bit half slot. The machine uses a VGA plasma display and it also comes with a full-size PS2 keyboard. The keyboard mm -hmm. is detachable and it has the same feel that you typically get with the, uh, the PS2 keyboards. The display is adjustable. The screen pops out. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's adjustable. And it's a five. It's a, a three and a half inch uh, floppy, 1.4 floppy. It uh, it's an extremely powerful device, full function desktop, portable with a handle on it. And the retail price. Also. The retail price uh, for the 60 megabyte file is 76.95, and for the 120 megabyte file, 82.95. Mm -hmm. Do you see this in the same way, Bob? Really, as a as a desktop replacement market, like Jeffrey was talking about? I think what our customers were telling us is that they needed a machine that they had the ability to take home on weekends, take to the remote office, but uh, not have to worry about taking floppies and transporting floppies. Uh, maintaining two separate systems is getting cumbersome today, so they wanted one system to do both. And it's an absolutely ideal system for both your desktop machine and for your remote weekend home machine. And what is the, what is the weight on this? The weight is 20.8 uh, pounds. And, it's, and compare that with a sheet of 17 pounds. Yeah. You've got a different design here, obviously, Bob, than the approach on the 3200SX. Yes. Is there any logic behind why you went to the sort what, of sewing case approach rather than the clamshell? What drove us, Stuart, was the full-size keyboard. And uh, what we also tried to do was to provide it in a balanced package. We put the power supply and hard file on the bottom, the screen, floppy, and system board in the middle. So you see it's not at all top-heavy, and mm -hmm. it carries like a briefcase. Okay, two very real nice machines, gentlemen. Thank you very much. In just a minute, we'll take a look at the new Macintosh Portable, so stay with us. <music> Joining us in the studio now, Mark Epley, Chairman and CEO of Traveling Software. Mark, it's inevitable that the Macintosh is going to come out as a, as a battery-powered machine, which you have here, obviously. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the machine itself? Well, it's the, uh, it's the first machine to come out with an active matrix display. It's the most stunning mm -hmm. display on any portable uh, on the market today. Now, what, what's uh, the advantage of that? Uh, it, it's very high resolution, and you can have animation. Okay. And uh, you basically got a transistor behind each pixel, right? So the thing exactly. is quick. Exactly. Uh, so this is one uh, solid state uh, screen with uh, mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of transistors. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the first portable that has a uh, pointing device built in. has this trackball uh, for the Macintosh uh, mouse substitute, which is uh, switchable on both sides. Uh, it has a full-size Macintosh keyboard. Uh, it comes with uh, an optional hard disk, 40 meg hard disk. Uh, the processor is twice as fast as the uh, SE, hmm. Macintosh SE. Which puts it at what rate? It's a 16 megahertz mm -hmm. okay. speed. Uh, and it's, uh, it's great for, I think this machine, the significance of this machine in, in the portable market is that just like the original Macintosh launched desktop publishing, mm -hmm. this machine will launch what, what I call desktop presentations. Uh, with that animation, for instance, yeah, sure. uh, we'll take a look at, it has also has stereo sound built in uh -huh. where uh, somebody can walk in to, uh, to an office and give a, an, an, an animated display. You have text here linked in with uh, graphics and, and more sound, mm -hmm. which is this, this little bird right here. So a salesman could walk in and, and give a, a complete animated display 
or in the classroom, uh, uh, animated uh, uh -huh. uh, teaching aid. What, what is the, in terms of things, the basics like uh, the battery life, uh, price, things like that? Can you well, the, bat the battery life also is a major breakthrough. With uh, existing portables, typically uh, three hours is an mm -hmm. average battery life. This machine has 10 to 12. Well, it's a lead acid, not an ICAN, right? Right. And you can, you can put it to sleep. In fact, I can go right here and up here. It has a, it has a fuel gauge battery. And you see, you always know how much uh, you have left. You can put it to sleep like that. I can close the case. And it's all modular construction. You can uh, take it apart. And right here, you have the, uh, the battery. Mm -hmm. So I can actually pull this out and put it back in and open it right back up, press a key, and I'm right back where I started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The original work. You can be on a plane, it's landing, stop, and you'll, all your work is uh, safe. Yeah. Now, do you have yeah. some more uh, uh, well, demos that might show, show off some of the uh, multimedia aspects of this? Uh, yes, I do. But let me uh, put it back together. Put it back together first? <laughs> okay. okay. I feel safer that way. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, that whole thing is modular. You can take it up. Yeah, you can take the, uh, just a bunch the of disk drives out. Uh, yeah. We open it back up. And, well, those uh, things are getting started. What's your, uh, uh, what's your feeling about the trackball versus uh, using a mouse? Because that's obviously a major change for the Macintosh. Yeah. Well, you can also you still to? you can also still plug in a mouse uh -huh. as an optional. But in a portable environment, um, a mouse is essential. Like if you're on a plane, it'd be a little embarrassing uh, <laughs> to take Jesus. a mouse and run it up somebody's <laughs> leg yeah. next to you. <laughs> uh, but it also uh, it has all the uh, ports of a Macintosh uh -huh. and then some. It has, as you can see here. It, it has a, a SCSI bus. It has a video out, uh, which with an adapter you can plug into yeah. a TV and set to TV. and to virtually any monitor. Mm -hmm. Mark, we heard, we heard the uh, other guys from IBM and Toshiba yeah. before talking about their machines as really desktop replacements. Do you see this in, in that category? Uh, yes, we do. You just buy this as your next Mac? Yes, it's, uh, actually the screen is, uh, is larger than, a, than an SE. Uh, and with that incredible resolution, and with the processing speed, uh, we'll see people buying this as a, an alternative to a, a desktop Macintosh. And what, and, was, and, and what about the price? Uh, the price with a floppy is uh, fifty-seven ninety-five. And the hard disk. And the hard disk is uh, sixty-four ninety-five. And the weight is thirteen point seven pounds floppy. That's with battery. Uh -huh. And fifth, two pounds heavier, fifteen point seven, with the hard disk. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, yeah. turn that on again for us. We just see that screen again, which, as you say, is is pretty exceptional. What do you think? You're, you're in the in the Portable computer business, there, Mark. Uh, uh, you like this? Oh, I, I think it's a it's a it's a milestone machine. It really is, and I think you will see uh, portables in the future, p p even PC portables, uh, having built-in pointing devices, uh -huh. because we are moving into the age of uh, graphical user interface, mm -hmm. uh, not only on the Mac but uh, with Windows mm -hmm. and PM on the. Mark, thanks very much for coming here and showing us the Mac Portable. Thank you. That's our look at the new generation of portable computers. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, IBM and Motorola have announced a joint venture to develop a handheld computer that can communicate with a host computer without using the telephone. The new online type service will not use phone lines, but radio waves utilizing IBM's existing private network that now covers 90% of the country. The handheld computers will have instant access to the network and be able to communicate at 4,800 baud. AT&T has announced a breakthrough in computer circuit design, a chip that transmits information using photons rather than electrons. The use of photons, fundamental light particles, could speed up a computer's performance by a factor of thousands. Dell Computers has announced new 386 PCs configured to run Unix. The 25 megahertz model will support up to 32 users. The Dell computer will come with VPIX software, enabling them to run MS-DOS as well as Unix. Atari has introduced its new laptop computer, the Stacy. It's pretty much a portable ST with built-in MIDI interface, three programmable sound channels, and the GEM operating environment in ROM. It features a high-resolution backlit display, and it comes with a built-in trackball. The Stacy can run off standard C-cell batteries in addition to the usual rechargeable battery pack. 
Toshiba has announced price cuts on its T1600 laptop. The price of the 20 megabyte version is being cut by $500. This week, Dr. John answers a question from a viewer who wants to know what can be done about monitor flicker when scrolling text. The flickering that you see is caused by the slow speed of the display circuitry. This is the same circuitry that causes snow in some cases as well. The trouble is, the flickering that you see in this kind of display is just like the flickering you see if you stare at a fluorescent light or an old-time movie. To eliminate it, you can either replace your color monitor with a high-persistence composite monochrome monitor, or you can switch to a different display technology altogether. If you're primarily word processing, I'd recommend a standard Hercules-type monochrome display system. And if you need color, I'd suggest upgrading to VGA. Although EGA works nearly as well as VGA, VGA is now the same price as EGA, or close to it, and VGA supports more display modes than does EGA. Also, the square pixels produced by VGA are a major improvement over EGA. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Dr. John. Innovatic has released a new software package that lets you do optical character recognition using an ordinary scanner and a standard 640K PC. The system is called ReadStar Express, and it recognizes type as small as six points. It sells for $995. Taking a look at this week's best-selling software titles for the Macintosh, Mac Connection reports that Macintax again leads the list, followed by Adobe Type Manager, Quicken, and Tops. Think C from Symantec moves up to number five. Rounding out the top ten, two more Symantec titles, the Sum 2 Utilities and SAM, an antivirus program, also Type Align for Adobe Type Manager, Microsoft Word, and Fifth Generation's Pyro. Mitch Caper's new company, On Technology, has finally released its first product, a file search desk accessory for the Mac, called On Location. It ships next month, price $129. Finally, another online miracle last week. A father and son who had lost contact and hadn't seen each other in 29 years found each other on CompuServe's EasyPlex. After a quick phone call to confirm that they really were father and son, the son flew to Tucson for a tearful in-person reunion. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next week. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you that software is produced by people whose income is derived from legitimate software sales. Software piracy is a federal offense. When a few people steal software, everyone loses. Additional funding is provided by Byte Magazine and BIX, the Byte Information Exchange, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.